Namaste. Welcome to the Ilonga Yogi Podcast. My name is Kate and I'm from Iloilo City. I'm a certified yoga instructor and certified in mental health counseling. I share content on yoga, mindfulness, fitness, mental health, self-care, and healing. Before we get into it, I want to let you know that I teach classes both in person and online. If you're interested in taking a class with me, just head over to bookwen.com slash healing dash Iloilo for the schedule and rates and to book as well. It's been a while since I last uploaded a podcast episode and I actually recorded one like several weeks ago. But then when I listened back to it, I felt like I was coming from this place of being the victim, being in pain and kind of struggling. And that's not how I want to portray myself in these episodes because the only reason why I'm doing this besides the fact that I enjoy talking about what I go through and bringing light to what I go through because I know that that could possibly help someone else who might be experiencing the same thing but feels alone is that I want it to feel like I am here to teach you something that I've learned or to pass on what I've learned from that experience and I don't really want to talk about something that where I'm like still going through it and come from this place of negativity because then it just seems like I'm venting out to you and that's something that I do not stand for <laughs> for my for my episodes for these episodes that I record um, you know I want it to benefit all of us and that's kind of why I don't talk about in deep uh, in deep detail what goes on in my life especially as you know I've always mentioned in the previous episodes what has recently happened a few months back and I always just refer to it like this was an incident that happened and something happened to me but I don't really want to go into much detail about it and I think that's something that I that I do a lot in most of my relationships just because you know I've lived a life where I always am struggling with something emotionally mentally or just going through a really rough patch and most of the time I've tried in the past sharing this with people in my life and the kind of response that I always get is that either they don't really understand it fully, they're unable to support me fully or the way that I am in need of or they brush it off and just kind of give me advice and then let's move on, you know, let's move forward. And and there's nothing wrong with that. So for me, it's just... I, it's just like I have had to figure things out on my own a lot of the time and then figure out my own my own healing, support myself and learn from that experience and then use that experience to help me help me in the future. If ever something similar happened or something worse happens, um, I I've gained like a specific tools, techniques that I use from that experience. And it's all just like, it's all me. You know, it's something that I've done. And and also I just feel more comfortable doing that wherein I don't vent to people. And I am sure a few of the closest people in my life can attest to that, how I don't really like to open up <laughs> or talk to them about my problems. I'll just say like, I'm not okay. Uh, or I, I'm... I'm down, I'm depressed, and even though I know that they try to reach out and help, it's just it just really makes me uncomfortable to start explaining why or talking about my feelings because I'd rather I understand what I'm feeling and ride the waves of that and figure it out on my own and then when the time comes that I'm ready to talk about it, then I talk about it, but coming from a place of of more hope and optimism rather than so much sadness and negativity and that's kind of how I've always navigated life especially more recently like later on in my life you know so so because of that um I wanted to re-record this episode and that's why I'm here today and also I haven't recorded anything. I haven't uploaded anything because I really wanted to step back and take a break a little bit. I was definitely feeling burnt out. And 
that's something that I'm very, very conscious about because in the past, when I ignored those feelings of burn burnout, I would always end up having to cancel last minute, having to find a way out of whatever commitments I've, I've put myself into. And it's just like always messy. So now I'm always trying to prepare ahead for anything like that and trying to make sure that I don't burn out to the point where I don't want to do what I'm doing anymore. You know, so I was feeling a little bit of um, my depression dropping by for a visit, you know, just saying hi. And because of that, I I stopped uh, my classes for a bit. I needed to step back a bit. And, you know, I always hear people kind of question me or ask me like why did why did you cancel your classes or oh your classes are canceled so i couldn't practice again and i understand i understand from being a student and just wanting to practice yoga and loving the practice right and being very loyal to to my class and to what i offer but at the same time it's like i wish i could just say it out loud well it's because I was tired and stressed and burnt out that if I forced myself to teach that day, probably I would not teach for the rest of the month. Kind of that explanation. But of course, I can't say that, anything like that, or do anything like that in front of you know people, in front of my students, of course, out of respect too. But that's kind of how I felt. Like I, Of course, I feel bad, but at the same time, I need to watch out for my health and make sure that I'm okay and that I can teach and show up. Um, and there is a lot of guilt, truly, but at the same time, it is what it is. Um, I can't just, I, I would probably, I would probably in the past blame myself for that, but now I have learned that it is what it is. It's something that I need and if I get uh, shit for it or if I, uh, if people lose respect for me because of it it is what it is um but i have to do it because i need to do this for my own well-being and because i want to keep teaching for the rest of my life if i if it's possible right so that's kind of where my head was at uh, several weeks back and now that i'm back because i of course i knew that i couldn't take a break for too long um i needed to get back and when i got back i have been very very busy Actually, this month of May is like very extremely busy for me. I cannot even tell you. Every single day, something pops up. Something is someone is asking me to do something, to to do this, to do that, which is fine because again, uh, all these responsibilities I have committed to. But it's definitely very overwhelming. Like you think that okay, tomorrow I'm gonna work out at this time, and then all of a sudden, oh, can we have a meeting at this time? And then oh, can you do this for for us? Oh, can you? And I'm like. Oh, okay, you know, and that's why my routine has been definitely whack for the past few weeks, even a month. It's very hard for me to adjust my routine lately. I've been trying things and, and not trying things, and um, it's been like a trial and error journey, honestly. And I know that like in the past, I've already had this routine that has been like set in stone for me. But now that things have changed because I have new things that I'm doing right now and it's keeping me very busy because I live further out from the city so it does take more time to go back and forth because I have to adjust to my partner as well and make sure that we are able to leave together and come back home together just because we have one car and I don't want to commute as often. Um, and so I have to adjust everything. We have to like work together a little bit and it's kind of difficult to adjust to that and to find a routine that works for all of us without trying to, of course, let go of a few things. But of course, some of those things are very important to me too. So it's um, been uh, a balancing act and it's been quite an, a, um, quite an experience to figure everything and navigate everything because I really cannot pinpoint a, a routine for me right now. And I'll explain later on why that matters to me a lot, but that's kind of where I, I'm at. And, you know, to top it all off, I think a week ago, was it a week ago, we had like blackouts all over Panay. That was too much. <laughs> 
Uh, I mean, I saw a lot of people on my feed complaining and just like being so angry and frustrated. And I was just like there reading all of that and like watching it all go down. Um, because like for me, to me, uh, I felt like I, I should not complain because if I had like an elderly with me who was uh, who needed electricity for, to keep them alive that's a time that i would get angry and frustrated but honestly i'm it's just me at home and um and me and my husband our our helper our dogs that's it and so we're fine but i know that there are other people out there that without electricity without fan without cold water or without air conditioning they are not okay their health is uh is very at risk and so i really had no no right to complain or say anything but it was kind of frustrating because where i live we didn't have power for almost like the whole day so from 2 a.m all the way to 12 p.m i think or so almost like 24 hours of just no power and the only thing that stressed me out about that is because um, I was so worried about like all of our food in the refrigerator and like the, all our appliances if anything would break I was afraid like maybe like a fire would would ensue because of the because of how the um, the power would come in and out like it would fluctuate a lot that was kind of what made me worry the most and of course like the dogs that they might feel very hot very warm and that could cause health problems to them too a lot of people die right a lot of dogs pets die of just too much heat and i did not want to do that and to top it all off i had to be at my partner's uh competition so that kind of made me worry a lot too that i wasn't home with them like i get a lot of anxiety when i'm not home with my pets with my dogs and that's kind of very hard for me knowing that i basically have to work uh outside a lot and I try, I try to to make up for that and like spend more time at home, especially if I'm not teaching. But it's been definitely a bit harder now that I have a lot on my plate. So there's that. It was definitely very stressful. I, I have all these pimples growing on my face. I get I have like rashes all over my body. Uh, and I usually that's a sign of just like stress and anxiety. And I think I, that's definitely what I've been dealing with lately. You know, after that that phase of feeling a little depressed, now I feel like the opposite and I have like so much anxiety, so much worry, so much stress. And I don't have a routine that keeps me grounded yet. So it's fun. It's a great week. It's <laughs> it's great to be alive. <laughs> but um, today I did want to talk about this topic of trauma and I guess help all of us including me understand it a little bit better because a lot of the time well in the past we've all defined trauma singularly in a way where it's something catastrophic that happens to a person usually if they were in the military or if they were in the war or if they went through a natural disaster something like just very intense um that's the only time we can label something as trauma but now as i started to look into it a little bit more i've come to learn that that's not the only definition of trauma anymore and that they've brought in it a little bit which makes sense just because we're all different people we all go through different life experiences and basically something that could be traumatic for you could not be even even remotely traumatic for someone else and that doesn't mean that what they're going through isn't valid or isn't tr isn't allowed to be labeled as trauma and vice versa right so i have a, a facebook group that i've created called mental health Ilo Ilo, and i posted there several weeks ago basically like a month ago about this because during this time i was again right just not doing well emotionally mentally felt really depressed uh, a lot was going on internally with me and so I felt like why don't I use this for something good and turn it to something positive so I decided to talk about it and ask and post uh, through that group and ask them what they thought trauma meant and uh, how they defined it and what are their uh, I guess 
I guess how how do they perceive trauma? You know, for for their in their own life. And so I was surprised that a lot of people responded, and that it was very.、Um, I guess a lot of them resonated with that topic, and so I wasn't expecting that at all. And so I'll read a few of them. Basically, one person mentioned how trauma is anything that prevents you from reaching your full potential, specifically a bad experience from your past. That causes fear and/or anxiety. Another person said, "Trauma is something you've experienced that is against your will or an unwanted experience. It affects your actions and decisions, especially if it is triggered again. It also instills fear and trust issues, and it can lead to deeper mental health issues if it's not addressed." Another person said, "Trauma and pain can be synonymous. It's sometimes like a sharp object that is buried deeply into your chest, wherein it is hard to recover. The pain is unbearable, though you can heal over time, but the scar or the trauma will always be there." And lastly, I think, yep, trauma is a speed bump. It forces you to slow down or crash when you are in motion throughout the life, throughout life. But if you see it and acknowledge it, you can work around it. So, you know, to me, I don't want to say that any of these answers are right or wrong. This is their interpretation of trauma, and I respect that fully. But basically, what I've also come to learn recently is that trauma could is it's it could be anything that if trauma is how you respond to an event. So let's say if an event was very painful for you,、uh, something happened. And then, of course, you respond it right then and there. But if you find yourself still responding to that event as if it just happened several months down the line, then we can start to look at it as trauma, right? Some people might almost、uh, diagnose that as PTSD, right? So it just makes more sense for those who have been through something very life-threatening or catastrophic, and they still like wake up with night in nightmares or. They get night sweats. They、uh, perceive that there's like a threat、uh, around them at all times, and so that's kind of how trauma is. And it's definitely trauma is something that helps us kind of process the pain. It's it's a way for our body, for our mind, to try to understand that pain that we're going through. But of course, it's it's like it's like it's just. A, it's, Kind of struggling to understand that, and that's kind of where, where it becomes very difficult sometimes to manage trauma. And the reason why I wanted to talk about this is because I believe I talked about this in previous episodes. But a few months ago, I started to feel like a shift in my mind, in my mental health, in my physical health. For one, I started to notice a lot of symptoms, like physical. Physical things happening.、Uh, for example, I would have like all these nightmares. I、uh, would have a difficult time、um, just going about my day, just because I'm so anxious, or I would feel very hyper vigilant most of the time. But basically, there was like a lot of things happening. I couldn't concentrate. I couldn't focus for the first time. Like my mind just felt like it wasn't. It wasn't like attached. To me, for some reason, I felt disconnected from my mind, and so I didn't understand why that was happening. But I did feel like that was most likely a red flag that I needed to pay attention to. And as you know, I had therapy. I booked a counseling session, and I'm glad that I decided to try this new、uh, therapy or this new.、Um, New group, or I don't know how to call them, but I basically found them on Instagram and online. They have a website, and I decided to give them a try <clears throat> because I've been trying to look for therapy or counseling with with people who who can teach me something that I don't already know, or could guide me in a way that I haven't done so far yet. Because I know that I already have very deep. Mindfulness practices, and I have so much self awareness that I needed something more. You know, I needed something more, something deeper that I wasn't getting in the past. And when I decided to book for a session recently, like a couple of months ago, it really did help me realize a lot of things. And 
although that was a therapy session so i was not diagnosed it's not allowed to diagnose me or anything like that uh we did talk about trauma a lot and the thing is i started to realize that what you resist really does persist there's that saying and we always use that in yoga i learned that from my yoga teachers but basically for the longest time ever since late last year I didn't want to label what happened to me as a form of trauma because I felt like it, it like the situation was just almost unreal and almost kind of funny if you thought about it but also it was very sad and also depressing so it's just like I didn't understand like how do I look at this situation and I didn't want to label it as trauma just because I felt like it wasn't it wasn't um devastating enough to be trauma but the way i was feeling kind of reflected the opposite of that and that it was it was me responding um and that i had or i was experiencing trauma <laughs> um so i i hope that's like clear so far and i'm making a lot of sense hopefully but what you really resist it persists so the more that i was pushing it away and denying it of being any form of trauma and trying to live my life and move on because last february during my birthday i told myself like i made a promise to myself that i will not let this define me anymore i do not want to go back to this moment i don't want to be sad because of it i don't want to just dwell on it anymore i'm going to let it go and move on and move forward in my life and everything's going to be happy again um but of course that was wrong because the opposite happened <laughs> and it just got worse from there and so it made me start to look at it differently like look at what i was experiencing look at the whole situation differently and maybe look at it through the lens of trauma let's take a quick break from this episode to talk about my juice brand daily greens if you're in Iloilo City and looking for healthy juice that doesn't have any added sugar, no preservatives, and is packed with a variety of vegetables and fruits, then you should try Daily Greens. With two flavors, one, healthy greens, which is mostly leafy greens, and carrots and veg, which is 50% carrots and other vegetables and fruits, they're unlike any other juice sold on the market. Most juices are packed with more fruits to help it taste better, but completely miss the point of being a nutritious and healthy drink. Daily Greens make sure that you get the most out of a bottle, packing it with more vegetables than fruits, and making it fresh, not to mention affordable for everyone. You can enjoy a bottle or two every day, which is perfect if your goal is to maintain healthy yet easy habits in the long run. Because we want to ensure the best quality, I encourage you to pre-order at least a day before and you can either pick it up at any of my classes or have it delivered straight to you via Grab. This is your sign to start building healthier habits in the most convenient way with Daily Greens. So now that I finished therapy or did that therapy session and had a bit of time to look at the whole situation, step back a little bit and take it all in. As I mentioned, I started to adjust my life through the lens of trauma and to see if that would work. Again, I know that I wasn't diagnosed with PTSD. I wasn't diagnosed with any form of trauma or anything, but because it was brought to light, it made me want to test it out and see if if it would work for me because the thing is with me in the past when i was diagnosed with, with bipolar 2 i did not want to take medication either by choice because i said i'll give it a try if i can learn certain activities ther certain um, practices that might possibly help and i knew that taking that path taking that route would mean it would be a lot harder it would take a, a, so much more time like it would take a lot of time to recover to heal unlike when you're taking medi medication you kind of you kind of get results you know in less than a year right and when it comes to not taking medication the the recovery or the healing or managing it will take so much longer and there's even like a possibility that nothing might help at all or it won't work at all because again there are a lot of things that you have to consider when it comes to mental health and so back then that's kind of my way of thinking that why don't i try different practices devote my life to it and 
to also say I was definitely more privileged than others that I could take a break from work and not work for a long time for a long period in order for me to take care of my mental health I know that others are unable to do that and so I understand that that could also explain why I was able to do what I did right so I gave that a try back then and so that's kind of what I'm what I'm doing now what I did was I tried to study a little bit more about trauma through videos on YouTube through podcasts uh, videos more from those who who create content like on news um, so more like intelligent YouTube channels not like just people talking about random things <laughs> so definitely studying studying about it from like TED talks and then from different podcasts about trauma and through that it started to I guess validate like what I was feeling I started to feel like I was heard and that I was seen and that was very very helpful like that was all the support that I really needed I mean that's why I do this right because it just helps when somebody talks about what you're going through especially when you think you're alone or you can't understand what you are feeling and then for someone to like exactly talk about what you are feeling makes you feel seen and heard and so that's kind of what I felt so when I started to to live that way and then study about it more and then look at other people who might be experiencing something similar that instantly created like a shift in what i was feeling right i started to become more accepting of it that that this is a part of me and it's just my body and mind's way of 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 processing what has happened to me and so i started to learn to sit with it you know almost like i know that my trauma is here present with me now. Maybe it's more present today than it was the day before, but it's it's okay. You know, I'm going to continue on and I acknowledge your presence. And if you're ready to go, it would be great if you could leave. But if you're not ready to go, then I'll sit here with you. I'll support you, right? Or kind of hold, I will support myself in that experience. That's kind of what I mean. Um, and And again, when I started to think that way, that shifted everything. Right, so that that again, um, starting to change my way of thinking and my understanding of certain things, and starting to open my mind to to other possibilities, like the fact that this can be seen through the lens of trauma. Maybe it is some form of trauma, and then studying about it just to make sure that um, if. I am on the right track and if this is exactly what I'm feeling and then the learning to accept it and embrace it as just a part of me for now but it's also possibly temporary as well that helped in changing the way I felt that really helped lessen what I was feeling physically like those physical symptoms they have definitely died down afterwards is of course going back to my routine Right? Because as I mentioned earlier, I need my routine to help ground me. And that has just always been a staple in my life for the longest time. Even when I was younger, this is something that I've always worked on, that I have to have a routine because it makes me feel like I am doing something worthwhile every day. It gives me less time to sit and then let my mind overthink and let my mind wander off. And of course, because for me, I easily fall into depression, especially if I've been, if I've been, I guess, um, what's the term? Kind of like very still for a very long time. I know that it doesn't help me a lot. Uh, it depends, of course, case to case basis still. But what works for me is to rest, but then to not rest for too long. So that's why I need a routine to help keep me accountable, help keep me responsible and disciplined. So I have tried a few things here and there, but it always changes, especially when you have a husband now and, and you have a home to be responsible for. There's a lot of things that have to be adjusted, uh, compromise, a lot of things too. So it's been a little tricky, um, but I think my non-negotiables would be, still continue to be my my practice my yoga and my meditation 
my breath work practices. I've I've tried here and there to do more somatic exercises. And sometimes I just allow myself to move freely as well when I'm here at home alone. So I just allow myself to move, to to go crazy and just to let out like what I'm feeling internally and and release it through my body. And that has helped me. Um, it always feels so liberating and so good to like dance around, move around and and sweat it all out. So that's also helped me. So somatic exercises, my yoga, my meditation, um, and also taking more time to just be in stillness um, and to be in the silence, right? So because when I was, I guess, uh, overthinking a lot and um, my, I just didn't want to deal with my emotions, and I was feeling a little depressed, but also very anxious. I noticed that I would be more addicted to my phone because I want to distract myself. Like I don't want to hear my thoughts. I don't want to feel what I'm feeling. So I would numb that by just scrolling and scrolling and scrolling, scrolling from the moment I wake up to scrolling for hours and hours and hours until I have done nothing once again. And so I am learning that I... I have to be comfortable with being still and be silent. And I know that's something that you're probably thinking, why am I unable to do that when I am a yoga teacher? <laughs> and I get it. But there are times where I I slack off too. And I'm also just human and I'm learning as, as we all are, as you are. So I have been trying to take some time to just sit, not have my phone with me, not scroll through my phone, kind of put my phone further away from me and just sit maybe drink coffee or have breakfast with nothing um and it helps if i sit out in my in my garden and in my rocking chair uh and just stay there and just watch like the dogs playing outside early in the morning where it's still quiet it's still very peaceful it's not that hot yet so that has also been a good practice for me because then it slowly trains me to be more comfortable with just being in stillness and in silence because a lot will come up whenever you're doing that. Like your thoughts will start to race a lot. Uh, a lot of things will, you'll start to feel a lot of things too. Um, and, and when you train yourself to be, to feel safe, even though that's happening to you, then whenever you, you start to feel your trauma resurface and that anxiety resurface, your body and your mind, well, your mind starts to tell your body that this is a safe space. You don't have to worry and it's okay. So it, you don't it doesn't affect you as much as it would so again uh just to recap a little bit starting to change my perspective i think that's the number one thing and even when i hold my counseling sessions for other people i kind of like to focus on that too you know if there's a different way to look at your situation and to change your perspective because sometimes that's like the only key to help you understand what you're going through and then find um find your way out of it or find um growth through that so changing your perspective and then trying to understand what it is that you are going through a little bit better learning to accept what you're going through as something that could be seen as temporary it's not a permanent thing and that this is also teaching you something this is also there to be a lesson for you uh, and then figuring out a routine that will ground you is very important and that that you are able to dedicate time to yourself. You know, this routine is meant to be there to help you feel like you're taking care of yourself. And that's why what works for me is my yoga, my meditation, finding stillness, finding silence, uh, moving my body to help release any anger, frustration, sadness. That always helps me. That has always been very therapeutic for me. And speaking of therapeutic, of course, therapy is very important too. And a lot of people, I guess, are very hesitant to consider therapy, thinking that therapy is only for those who really, really need it. But the truth is, it just helps when you talk to someone. It really, really does. It doesn't even have to be a professional, but at least someone that you don't really know or somebody um, who are, you're not close with, who will not judge you or 
um, where there is no bias. It just always helps when you talk to someone and when someone is just there to listen. Sometimes you don't need advice. You just want someone to hear you out. And so therapy is also very important in all forms of it. And that's something that I will also be doing pretty soon. Like I know that I, probably by the end of this month, because it's been very, very hectic, I uh, will need to book a second session. And and when it comes to therapy, this is something that you don't have to do very, very often, actually, especially, especially if you're not like diagnosed with anything. I just think that it's it's very helpful for everyone to be able to talk to someone every now and then, maybe once every few months, maybe twice a year if that works for you, just to go back to that same person. Um, but to do it like on a regular basis that works for you could be very helpful. It just it just helps you come back to yourself and helps you process anything that you're going through because the truth is we all go through a lot of things and a lot of emotions and some things are left ignored and that could cause a lot of uh, breakdowns and frustrations that you may have in the future and of course lastly is leaning into more self-care activities i always talk about self-care and i know that i talk about it non-stop but the truth is like when you start to realize that what you're going through sometimes can be addressed just through self-care everything changes you know you'll realize that i was struggling for that long when all i needed was probably i just needed a, a break i just needed a massage i just needed some time to to go to the beach alone. Um, and so leaning towards those self-care activities because you know that it's something that, it's like medicine for your soul. It's medicine for your soul. And so don't take that for granted because those are very, very important. And whether or not you have been through a traumatic experience, a traumatic event, or you're currently dealing with trauma, whatever it is that's on your plate right now, this, all of this that I've shared with you on how I cope with, with trauma or what I'm doing right now to manage my emotions, to keep myself in check and to keep my life balanced. This is applicable to everyone, really, you know, from changing your perspective in certain situations to studying a little bit more so that you understand what you're going through to learning to accept what it is that you're feeling at present, but in a way where you're not accepting your doom, but more of accepting that this is here for now, but it won't be there forever. And things can change eventually and trusting that it will change eventually. Finding a routine that helps give back to yourself, that helps make you feel like you are taking care of yourself, that you are taking time every day to to add a little bit of self-care in your schedule and that it matters, right? Of course, even things like journaling. Journaling is very important, especially for somebody like me who has been through what I've been through. I've learned that I can actually adjust the way I journal. And now because, of course, if you're somebody who has experienced trauma, you wouldn't want to journal about that trauma. That's the last thing that you'd probably want to do. It, it's going to be very difficult to to replay it in your head and then write about it. So I've shifted the way I journaled and just focused more on a very quick way of journaling, asking myself what I have accomplished for the day, what I want to focus on for the day, what I'm grateful for, what my affirmations are, and then that's it. Sometimes I don't, I don't like write down anything that I'm feeling or what I'm thinking, especially if it's a little sensitive for me to do. So journaling, including that as part of your daily routine, including that in one of the many self-loving activities you can do for, for you. And of course, relying on other people to support you through therapy, other professionals who know what they're doing, who are good at what they're doing to support you and guide you as well. I think one, one way of defining trauma, which I feel helped me a lot is the author Bessel van der Kolk of uh, body uh, the body keeps the score I think or body keeps a score something like that I'm sorry if, I mean, if it's wrong but you you get it right uh, if you know the book then you know 
He says, contrary to popular belief, trauma is extremely common. We all have jobs, life events, and unpleasant situations causing us daily stress. But when your body continues to relive that stress for days, weeks, months, or even years, that stress changes your brain, creating trauma inside your mind, and that trauma can eventually manifest in your physical body. As you can see, trauma isn't what happens to you, but how you respond to the traumatic situation. Something that is traumatic to one person may be no big deal to the next. So when I finally stopped denying myself of that and finally learned to accept it as a form of trauma, that's when everything changed for me. That's when when I started to feel like I'm not as hopeless as I thought I was. So going back to those self-care practices, to mindful movement, to journaling, to therapy, to educating myself about it and just seeing this experience of trauma as a way that has brought me closer to myself and helped me support myself in the best way that I need as I heal through all of this has in itself just been the most fulfilling thing as well. Like I said, when I tried to record this several weeks ago, I was coming from a different headspace and just in a matter of a few weeks, I'm now here you know wherein i don't feel like that trauma defines me anymore i feel like i am coping with life a little better than i was and there are many people out there maybe you who are listening right now who still feel like that trauma has taken over you who still feel miserable and and you can't explain what you're feeling how you have so much sadness so much anxiety and sometimes probably this is the way through it maybe this is all you really needed so hopefully this helps you and hopefully if there's anyone else in your life you could share this with them too and maybe they'll feel less alone maybe it'll shed some light maybe it'll teach them or think a thing or two so again thank you for listening to this episode of the ilonga yogi podcast if you like more similar content you can follow me on my socials at ilonga yogi Wishing you peace in the body, peace in the mind, and peace in your heart wherever you are. Always take care of yourself.